This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fling. Spring Fling. We're back. I felt like that scene where SpongeBob and Patrick are put under a heat lamp so they can dry <laughs> out. I'm God's child. <laughs> this is how I was meant to feel forever. They look a little weird, but like not so weird that I can't get into it. Even when you like need something bigger than a ramekin, but smaller than a Deadpool 3 bucket. <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Ah, uh, yeah. Great to be back with you. We can't wait for this to be over. No, kidding. Um, what is it? You kind of you get a little uh, spring breaky. I need a vacation from my vacation. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How dare we? I know. I know. We're such butts. But we'll tell you the, about a really great place to get do-it-yourself wedding gear from. Mm-hmm. Every, Tis the season. <laughs> yeah, it's coming up, isn't it? And so we'll tell you about them and also Prime IV that we experienced, possibly Picasso, mm -hmm. and these hippos that we love. Hey, real quick, what's this? touch grass bullshit I'm hearing about <laughs> the kids are saying these days. Okay. Yeah. So basically it's like an internet expression that's saying like, either you're taking this way too seriously or you spend too much time on the internet or you're so detached from reality. You need to go out and touch some grass. Okay. Because I, I wondered, you know, like, I don't know. I heard 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even 20, somebody told me, you know, what really helps me is I, I like to get grounded and walk in the grass. Okay. And she wanted me to do it with her, and so I did. It can be nice. Uh, yeah, but I don't think it grounds me to Mother Earth, thank you very much. I think I can walk it's on a little plush literal. carpet. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Or even faux wood flooring. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and still not have to touch grass. Yeah. Okay, so now I get it. It's it's a little bit of snarky, sarcastic, and salty. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, kinda, in that case, I love it. Yeah, nowadays it's meant kind of as an insult. Like, um, you're such a little internet troll. Get out of your mom's basement and go touch some grass. Well, I will say... The kids have gotten kinder <laughs> with their mean expressions. Yeah. You know, I think that a big part of it is like a lot of the kids are so concerned about mental health and stuff like that. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they don't they get never like, want to be the reason for somebody else's breakdown. I think that's part of it. And it, it's also, I think part of it too, is that like they all have sort of, not all of them, but a lot of folks are sort of, you know, becoming more educated on certain subjects and not necessarily self-diagnosing, but kind of sort of self-diagnosing. Oh, I know. And the scary thing, kids these days, uh, have the vocabulary for it too. Right. Which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Uh, no, I don't either. But I think they then, because they're kids and their emotions are heightened uh -huh. and everything's, oh, so much worse. I got to go on and live myself. Right. I think that, uh, you know, when they throw around things like gaslighting, Mm -hmm. No, maybe they're not gaslighting you. Maybe you're wrong. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I... <laughs> Sometimes they try to make very normal things sort of clinical, and it's like, honey, yeah. that's not how that works. Right. <laughs> they they sound like a kindergartner trying to sound like a seventh grader. Yeah. Or a seventh grader <laughs> trying to sound like a college student. That's kind of how it sometimes comes across to me. Mm -hmm. Well, and to be fair, sometimes... But maybe it's my problem, Carly, <laughs> and I should go touch some grass. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Well, and and you know too. Sometimes they just are better educated than than most generations have been, especially on really Is abstract. That it? You think you're better than me? <laughs> especially on really abstract topics like mm. mental health. I mean, the thing with mental health is that there are some physical manifestations of it. A lot of it's very uh, up to your own subjective, perception. Subjective, exactly. Yes. Yeah, subjective. Thank you. And that can be a problem, right? Right. And a lot of the symptoms don't always manifest in everyone who has that, or they manifest differently. Right. You know, so. it's, yeah, when, when you are a first year psych student and you start realizing <laughs> or reading about studying about disorders, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them think, oh man, do I have that one? Ooh, do I have that one? Right. No, we all have a little bit of that in mm -hmm. us. The way that I think of it is. But I is, think kids these days kind of uh -huh. s describe their feelings as if it's a disorder. Right, right. Well, and to be fair, sometimes that is just the most accurate word for what they're trying to describe. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, I think that they want to sound like it's more serious than it is. Because um, they're overdramatic little punks and haven't seen a lot of life and everything's hard. Right. But the thing I was going to say is I would Kidding. like, I don't call it a disorder. <laughs> 
The thing I was... I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to keep interrupting. (laughs) It's okay. The thing I was going to say is... Would you just talk already? Okay, now this is getting old. (laughs) The thing I was going to say is I don't feel like anything's a disorder until it starts disrupting certain parts of your life. You know, until you're not able to function like a normal person. Yeah, very well said. I should have let you say it earlier. You probably should have, but you know. It's fine. And now that I've insulted other people, sure. let me insult myself, can we? We're just we're starting <laughs> off right. Okay, yeah, I, I dig it. Here's what we did our in our spring break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I fact checked myself, and I'm an idiot. You know how we have Napoleon Dynamite in Idaho? Right. Montana has no cartoon. Utah, no cartoon. Uh-huh. There's an idea. Utah. Oh, funny. Like, get a nice little, like... Cartoon going in Utah? And I was confused how come they put Yogi Bear in Wyoming. Okay. Because I thought most of Yellowstone National Park <laughs> or Jellystone National Park uh-huh. would be in, you know, Montana. Right. Boy, was not just wrong, but a lot wrong. <laughs> so Yellowstone is in three states. Wyoming, as we know. Mm-hmm. Montana, as we also know. And uh, in Idaho, too. Here's yeah. the percentages. The majority of Yellowstone is in Wyoming, 96%. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a small section of the park, 3% to the north and northwest. Mm -hmm. And then a small section of the park to the west, as we know, is in Idaho. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Is it one of those things that I learned in geography (laughs) and then forgot about and then never checked myself again? Yeah, probably. (laughs) And then I wrecked myself. It's cool. It happens. Okay. And you know, honestly, like (laughs) now that I'm actually thinking of it, based on my drive to Yellowstone and stuff, of course that's where it is. Like, of course, most of it's in Wyoming. Well, yeah, but I've had a couple, I've had a couple of Yellowstone experiences in Montana. Like, uh, didn't realize I was in Yellowstone. Right. Got busted by a Montana SP. Oh, really? I have no excuse. What did you get busted for? Well, if you're in West Yellowstone, Montana, one of the memorable things or ways for us to go uh-huh. is, um, you know, where you see all the painted buffaloes. Right. That's all in West Yellowstone, Montana. Right. So I I really thought that made the rest of Yellowstone in Montana, too. I just wasn't thinking. Okay. Never thought about it. Yeah. What I get busted for? Speeding. And they get uh... you. Last time I was there, they didn't post the sign, I don't think, Mm -hmm. but it goes from like, I don't know, 70 to 55 or something. Yeah. That's so dumb. Wasn't paying attention. Mm -hmm. I broke the law. (laughs) You're a criminal. criminal. (laughs) All right. Moving on. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, what were we talking about with there must be a certain, oh, gene or something where you don't mind people... Uh, where where people might not mind, you know, spiders crawling on them and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. We were talking about the cranberry bog spiders. Yes. <laughs> which I believe are wolf spiders. Oh, still give me the heebie-jeebies. And there's another follow-up. I think they are slightly venomous, right? Is it venomous or poisonous? Uh, ve- venomous. If it bites me and I die. It's venomous. It's venomous. If I bite it and it dies. It's poisonous. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, if I bite it and it bites me and neither of us dies, it's a pretty good Saturday night. Sounds so. sounds like it. <laughs> but one of the questions I had was, wait, aren't those those one guys in New York that were famous for building the skyscrapers? And maybe they didn't have the fear of heights gene? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the Mohawk iron workers was a real thing. Mm-hmm. They worked in New York from the 30s to the 70s on special labor contracts as specialists. They even participated in building the Empire State Building. But yeah, wow. they they just found that these particular iron workers, the Mohawk iron workers, didn't fear heights or dangerous conditions. Wild. And I wonder how much of that is conditioning versus Right. Gene? Yeah, yeah. You know, but Did they yeah. grow up on a cliff? It makes you wonder, right? Yeah. And also, I feel like <laughs> the intuitive way to build a, a skyscraper is to do it one floor at a time. You know, especially because then if you do fall, you're just falling one one floor. <laughs> right. That's not so bad. But I think this is by the time it got up 80 stories. <laughs> right, right. And they're, you know, 100 feet above the streets of New York. Just Jeez. You've seen the pictures of oh. the dudes eating a sandwich oh, on yeah. the steel beam. Yeah, with like the clouds behind them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen them. They terrified me. Yikes. I have this thing where if I get up too high, because I'm terrified of heights, uh, my tailbone will tingle. Mm, mm. It's super weird. 
But yeah, every like every time I saw that that picture, it just made my tailbone tingle and I didn't like it one bit. I think my hands get tingly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's actually a pretty common thing. Uh. Huh. So I'm a hands guy and you're a tailbone gal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> just know. Just for tingliness. That's all we're talking about. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> So speaking of heights and iron, is our is our water tower iron or steel? I don't know. Oh, I mean, I would assume steel. They're called iron workers, but they probably build steel structures, right? Yeah, almost always. Steel's kind of the like. That's the go to. Yeah, that's the reason we can have skyscrapers. Exactly. Yeah, because it's because it, steel is somehow even stronger than iron. Yeah. Princess Mon okay? Yeah. Well, They've got like the iron workers that oh, make that's the right. guns and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. maybe they had iron workers mm -hmm. long before steel was really, you know, developed and perfected. Right. And they're just like, well, steel, you don't get your own workers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As well, names. and I know steel <laughs> is sort of an offshoot of iron. Like it's made out of iron. Something to do with smelting, so, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's an alloy. We could Google it instead of being a couple of idiots. <laughs> I just know that whoever smelted it. <laughs> All right, moving on. I don't care. Speaking of heights, look at our shirts. Yay. Yes. Okay. Aren't these rad? Pretty cool, huh? Am I leaning back far enough? Okay. If not, then they can definitely see mine. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah, yeah nice using flatten out. As as lovely. I'll try to I'll try to flatten out as much as I can. I'll sink that in. As modeled yeah. by the lovely Carly Morgan. <laughs> These are the brand new mm -hmm. Teton t-shirts. This one is my first foray into mm -hmm. really loving the vintage stuff we know is going away soon. I know, yeah. So this is made to look like a mm -hmm. vintage Idaho Falls tourist t-shirt. So did I tell mm -hmm. you or did I tell you when we visited the Visit Idaho Falls experience uh -huh. and experienced that, I think these shirts are better. I would agree. I think Little these are some really good shirts. I know. So let's make a deal. We hired an artist, Greg, right. from mm -hmm. Kaleidoscope. In fact, he signed it. Yeah. This is his signature right there in the very bottom. This shirt, we feel, is literally a work of art. And there's two more coming. This is the first in a series. Uh huh. Not about the water tower, about other, okay, spoiler alert, tall. Idaho Falls landmarks. <laughs> I'm excited, honestly. And there's another one that I'm really excited for. Yes, that one is in the works. Yeah. Un unfortunately, it got moved down the queue. I know it did, you rat bastard. I know. <laughs> We've been talking about it for years now. About Yeah, about a year, I think. Okay, real quick, let's hydrate. What are you drinking? Oh, well, I, I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking the limited edition Sprite Chill. Okay. It is apparently a cherry lime flavor. Now, when I was a kid, I freaking loved lime rookies from Sonic. I don't know if you ever got one of those, but they were the freaking best. Yes, so, they were. Oh, yeah. 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 Especially oh. with that, like, oh, slushy Sonic ice. You know, you can buy that by the bags. Yes. Yeah. And it's good ice. Uh -huh. It's the good stuff. Oh, yeah. Not everybody <laughs> does ice well. Oh, no. Sonic does. Maverick does when they do their own. Right. Winco is okay. Pick me up is good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Now, is there a zero one of these? I didn't see one, but I'm guessing that there are. Just I was in line at the grocery store and I saw it and I was like, you're coming with me. <laughs> but Sonic Ice, I love because it's the best chewing ice. Oh, yeah. 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 Like by far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it just has that perfect amount of crunch without like f***ing up your teeth. <laughs> it's, it's nugget ice. Yes. That is I great. I love nugget ice. That doesn't necessarily taste, it doesn't nail the cherry lime Ricky for me, but it's mm -hmm. great. You know, it does taste like a cherry lime Ricky baby. Like if Sprite and a cherry lime Ricky had a baby. Okay. So I think it's there. You it know? did give me that tang in the back. I know, right? I love wow. those. Yeah, that's nice. I, I, I like felt that. that. A lot. Did, you, did you feel that? I felt that. <laughs> Oh, I want to mention tetontshirts.com in case we haven't plugged this enough. Right, yes. Get your own mm -hmm. vintage water tower t-shirt. Which also, a few years ago for Valentine's Day, I was looking for a, a water tower t-shirt for you. Yeah. And I couldn't find a single one on the entire internet, and I was so pissed. It should exist. It should exist. It should exist. I really thought it would be something relatively easy to find, or I could find, like, you know, one of those vinyl shops that would slap it on there for you pretty right. easy. But, like, I couldn't find anything like it anywhere and finally, I ended up getting you something else entirely. But I want to walk that back and say a good one should exist. Right, right. 
Yeah. Well, at the time, I couldn't even find a single one. Because you need to be drinking your Sprite Chill. Yeah. And your vin- made to look vintage Idaho <laughs> Falls Water Tower t shirt. I bet you the new one is going to be so ugly, and I'm just not looking forward to it, man. We've had this talk. You're completely wrong. <laughs> <sighs> like, I just, I feel like this one's so iconic that they need to do something. Like, it doesn't have to be what exactly. What could they this. do to make it iconic? Okay. I actually just had an idea as I was saying that. Okay. You know, the kind of like wave pattern that are, that's on all of the Idaho, Idaho Falls signage? Like my logo t shirt last week. Yes. They should do a pattern of that all around it kind of like one of those um fiesta ole cups oh yeah, yeah. okay not just mm-hmm. under the logo right. or not just over the logo uh-huh but all the way around keep yeah. going with it yeah all the way around the tower i think that looks super cool there's another million dollar idea courtesy of carly morgan mm-hmm. that one i would like a hundred dollars for though <laughs> if you use it <laughs> i wonder if they will have a okay design the water tower contest yes and i think that would win i think so but you know what that's what they did that's why this water tower looks this way mm-hmm. is because in the 70s mm-hmm. they had a the city of idaho falls hosted a paint must have been a lot cheaper back then but they they hosted a designer water tower contest Really? The winner was Ken Longmore. Mm-hmm. And the reason you see the little mini um, water tower bench that we always talk about when right. we talk about the Visit Idaho Falls experience, uh-huh. that bench was in honor of, it's part of the Art You Can Sit On series so all around the river. There's uh-huh. a snake and there's a something else. I know that there's like one that's two Idahos and then a bench in between them. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's also like a music note. So the reason that water tower bench exists is to honor Ken's daughter, Tara Longmore, who sadly passed away. Mm -hmm. You may remember her as part of Brad and Tara Yeah, on the radio. So, okay, I think that's everything we know about the Idaho Falls water (laughs) tower this time around, kids. Right. I know we've talked about it a lot, but it's such an iconic piece of our city. Well, and it's going away. Yeah. It's on our mind. Yeah. You know who else is on my mind? Kevin Odette. Here's another follow-up. We featured uh-huh. him last episode. We did, yeah. at the very end, but he does this really creative series of collages. Mm-hmm. He calls them street views. And if you should go to his website and get a metal print and support your local artists because they're cool. Yeah, whenever you can, absolutely. Uh, come to find out, I guess you're creative in one way, you're creative in another, because I didn't realize this. Uh-huh. He's the guy that we got the lemon cheesecake from at the Snake River Animal Shelter Furball. Right. And also, <laughs> that was such a freaking good cheesecake. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. I've now, been thinking about that cheesecake a lot, and I'm so glad that we know who made it, because I didn't know yeah. until Whitney sent us a... a picture of it and it was like hey isn't this the same kevin odette and we were like oh my gosh it yeah is. how many kevin odettes can there be in town right right Maybe yeah two <laughs> one would think uh, just think but, one's a great artist like one's a great photographer one's a great baker <laughs> so set this up and and explain the this is the first one i maybe i haven't been paying attention but this is the first uh dessert dash i've ever seen okay yeah at the snake river animal shelter fur ball a few weeks ago mm-hmm so explain the, the dessert dash a little bit for folks who haven't done one. That's what I'm asking you to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got I, it. I feel like you uh, were paying more attention and are more qualified. Oh, I here's the thing. I take dessert very seriously. <laughs> we'll work on our setups, tell. people. It's okay. As you know, we're semi-pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taking <laughs> off a week for spring break. What are you thinking? Well, you know, we need a little time. Yeah. But anyway, as you know, I take my desserts very seriously, as you, you can clearly tell. Oh, come on. Anyway. <laughs> But uh, basically what happens is you walk into this room and right in the middle of it is this beautiful dessert table just full of all these sweet treats that just catch your eye. It's eye candy full of candy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway, and basically how they did it is that they would leave these cards on each of the tables and each of the patrons at the table could contribute a certain amount, uh, yeah, a certain amount of money toward dessert. And But before that happens, Uh all night long. Oh, all night long during you're announcements, at it. Mm-hmm. you know, uh, before even dinner, mm-hmm. you're staring at this amazing spread. Right. Exactly. So you're really getting your appetite worked up. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why they do it. Is you're more likely to pledge more? Yeah, I think so. But anyway, basically, you pledge as much as you can for your 
dessert as much as you think is appropriate and then your table's contribution is counted as you know one total and whoever uh contributes the most gets to go first and then it just goes in order right and we got in surprisingly like our table did pretty well i don't yeah. know if we were top 10 but were we top five i somewhere in there i mean we were pretty early on in there whitney uh, mm -hmm. from lane and whitney fame uh -huh. We have like five friends we talk about on this show. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, but uh, from Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company, she um, was so excited to get this cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is this like, is this my birthday? Is this my party? <laughs> is this my ball? Because. It's exactly what you lemon, wanted too. Yeah. Yeah. And you loved it. Anyway, oh, we all raved about it. Mm -hmm. Kevin, if you open a bakery, Put it in your street level and then call us. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because damn. Well, and honestly, I've been like kind of craving this thing ever since then because it's such a perfect summer dessert. You know, like sitting on your chair, watching the sunset on a nice oh, yes. summer evening. It's a light dessert. Cheesecake in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe it was just one fantastic. thin, not quite candied mm -hmm. lemon cut so oh, it can yeah. swirl, poking oh, out, yeah. and it, maybe a dollop mm. of. Psh, oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> Whatever that stuff, with whipped cream. <laughs> whipped cream. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, it's so funny. I just saw a TikTok video of a mom asking her kids, what's this called? Holding up a can of whipped cream. And they go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm not alone. Thank you're you very alone, much. You're fine. That's, okay. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. In fact, when I realized we weren't going to have a podcast for a week, I contacted two parties, Lane and Whitney, mm -hmm. and then our buddy, Kevin in Manhattan, <laughs> who we somehow always end up talking about. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, one thing, I, I'm not going to go on this show and go, hey, guys, sorry, I haven't been around for a minute. Um, you know, it's things were tough, and then I had to take a last-minute trip, and my kid got sick with the flu. You know, first of all, no one cares. <laughs> That's not how the internet works. Some people Do care. Do you know what I mean? No, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares, and here's why. That's not how the internet works. You know you're gone. Mm -hmm. But people are still seeing from you and hearing from you because right. some it's depending on everybody else's algorithm, mm -hmm. there's no one stalking you going, ooh, they didn't post today. They didn't post for the last six hours. I wonder what's wrong. Is it something I said? That's not how it works, number one. And number mm -hmm. two, don't, don't do this either. Hey, guys, I really just need to take a break from social media. And then post a meme three hours later. Right. That just looks funny. <laughs> yeah. But that's a lousy segue, as always, you're welcome, mm -hmm. to uh, some new friends we want you to meet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not new to me. I've known Ninja Nick forever. And one day, maybe today, maybe later, we'll tell you the story of how he became Ninja Nick. I love it. Because you don't just earn that nickname <laughs> all willy-nilly. <laughs> right. That Ninja nickname. Yeah. <laughs> funny. Okay. Funny. Anyway, but we paid a visit to... Uh, his house and Autumn Beam's house. Yes, hold up the mm -hmm. goods. They have a business they're doing, and we wanted to tell you about it this episode because we think it's super mm -hmm. relevant, like right now. Of course. And that's yeah, what we always try to do on the show. On. Yeah, provide you of something of mm -hmm. value in a timely manner. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I mean, especially here in Idaho. So I used to work in the wedding industry, I used to help sell wedding dresses, and it does not work here everywhere in the country. But in this particular pocket of the nation, weddings go, weddings get planned much faster than in most places. The Mormon Corridor. Yes. <laughs> is what we're talking about. It's an actual Wikipedia article and it, the Western equivalent of the Bible Belt, some might say. It goes from Mesa, Arizona, I think, all the way up to Rexburg and... Mm -hmm. And that's it. But yeah, there is a certain lifestyle here. Right. Yeah. Well, and I would say that most places in, in the U.S. people will spend about a year working on their wedding, give or take. Oh, yeah. You know, here I'd say the average is closer to about three months, you know, six if you're non-LDS. Um, and so we'd get a lot of folks who would come in wanting to buy wedding dresses and expecting that they could have them like shipped in from the designer if they wanted a brand new one. And it's like, oh, honey, that alone takes like six months. Yeah. I remember talking <laughs> to some... Persians, and mm -hmm. I don't know if their race is um, important in this conversation, but I think their culture is. Yes. I was in Disneyland once, and we, you know how sometimes you have to eat your lunch right, right next to people you don't know. Right, right. Struck up a conversation. They had been planning their wedding for like three years. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's all, it takes all kinds and we love mm -hmm. it. 
Yeah. But anyway, so especially around here, weddings are going to be going off in the next couple of months. So you probably either started to, you know, uh, plan your wedding or you're right in the middle of it. So if you need some help with that, check out Autumn's DIY Weddings. DIY Weddings and Events. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to play a little video here uh, and you'll get the idea pretty quick. Mm -hmm. This is just their showroom. They've got right. two or three times as much. Uh -huh. And it's all one of a kind stuff because of Ninja Nick. Right. Like he built his own house kind of handyman. <laughs> right. But he makes really thoughtful, artful pieces that you're not going to find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted you to see some of this stuff. Yeah. Oh, and you know, another thing that's really cool is their drink cart that they can rent out to you too. Yes. You know, so you can do um, alcoholic beverages as well as like, you know, a uh, Italian soda bar or like a hot cocoa bar or something like that. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Probably check with your local um, city ordinance people about where you can willy nilly sell alcohol. But I think if it's a private event, right? Yeah. Well, and also I would assume yeah. that you're not selling it if it's an event. Right. You're probably not going to rent their drink trailer to do a street <laughs> event. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you might. I yeah. don't know what their rules are. Anyway, a couple of really nice people. I go way back with at least Nick. Yeah. And I think you've known Autumn for as long as I have. Yes. <laughs> Great people. DIY weddings and events on Facebook. Yep. Uh, or if you just Google DIY weddings, Idaho Falls, it pops right up. That's right. Okay. What well, we did on spring break. Yes. Spring fling, spring week, whatever we did. Yeah. I would say it's a spring break. <laughs> That's what we needed. We'll play what's in, what's in the bag, what's in the bag in just a second. <laughs> but first I wanted to flex just a little bit. Boy, you thought my uh, Easter honey baked ham and split pea soup was good? Mm -hmm. I got it down now. Right. Yeah. You really Watch killed out, it world. this time around. Yeah. Yeah. I got the ratio uh -huh. right. Oh, the ratio was perfect. Of everything. I didn't add Mikey's signature too much salt <laughs> this time around. So you could actually salt it yourself a little. If you wanted to. Yeah. But yeah, I, I posted it on the internet and got like 20 likes. So I'm very... <laughs> you should be so proud. I'm very proud of that. I, I think that posting on the internet something you made has mm -hmm. one rule and it's show the finished product first. Right. If I you expect me to go through, like get me invested in your finished product first. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't build a bookcase or, or worse yet, repaint one. Uh -huh. I don't know why that's worse. <laughs> just It just came out. Um, but uh, don't do that and start with the old one. Right. Well, and it's Maybe so a before and after up front. Well, I was going to say, because I feel like the intuitive thing is to start with the before. Yeah, is to tell the story. I yeah. get it. And that's why I'm making such a point of this. Uh -huh. Everybody wants to see, just show me the thing. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. You that's know, fair. just like when you go to a recipe. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom died when I was two, and I had a series of terrible <laughs> stepmothers, and uh, right. and and now here's my split pea soup recipe. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, the only thing good about all Jump of my stepmothers is that they each told me about the special ingredient to this <laughs> <Yeah>. soup. <laughs> and without yeah. all twelve of them, I never would have had the perfect soup. And now you can too, without thirty years of trauma. <laughs> I love this person we're making up. She sounds just. Amazing. And like she like she really needs a good therapist. I I'd love to try her soup. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, I think that that's the one that I, that's the one nice thing about evil step parents. You know, they do at least have some wisdom to impart, even if they don't intentionally do so. And then when my husbands died in the war, we had to just live off soup for four years. And that's when I really perfected this. And also how I perfected not shitting my pants, despite the fact that I constantly had diarrhea <laughs> from eating nothing but soup. <laughs> <coughs> Kidding. <laughs> okay. So you get the point. Yes. <laughs> but so I started with the finished product first. And then my only other second rule is to make a little jokey joke somewhere in there. Oh, sure, yeah. So I'm there I am boiling a honey-baked ham, ham hock, mm -hmm. ham bone. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I sang the ham bone song. And Cute. then I kept posting mm -hmm. and hit post. Uh-huh. But what ham bone song do I mean, Carly Morgan? 
ham bones connected to the mm-hmm. oh yeah 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 i don't know what bone but it's in there <laughs> but a ham bone is in there yes isn't it i mm, isn't no it? actually i don't think it is oh maybe that's the that's the other song knee bones connected to the thigh bone yeah hip bones connected to the there's no ham bone in that song no because it's talking about a human skeleton what if it's not it, what if it's talking about pork anatomy <laughs> I, don't know. I just really <laughs> doubt it <laughs> okay and I'll, I'll go back and look and find out if i have to pay the idiot tax again i swear i thought it was ham bones connected to the no no I'm no it's idiot. like thigh, bo- thigh bones connected to the leg bone i don't know something like that well you're younger than me and yeah. so you were closer to kindergarten than i am at this point oh and also that particular <laughs> song was featured in alvin and the chipmunks meet frankenstein see what so, i mean yeah, and I loved that movie for some reason, <laughs> and it made me really want to try frog legs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At one point, they need to make like a witch's brew to help with something. Yeah, you tried talking me into frog legs. I want to try them. Doesn't you know who has them? Frickin' Winco. Win- I know. Of course they do. I know, and I keep seeing them, and every time, like they look a little weird, but like not so weird that I can't get into it. Yeah, look just like. I mean, I hear they taste like chicken. I don't know. I, I, they seem like they'd be good. Honestly, I think I kind of like exotic meats. Yeah. You yeah, can you've take had... that out of context, <laughs> uh, out of context internet. <laughs> that means two things. <laughs> but no, like, I really want to try you've snake. Had squid and its own ink and oh, stuff. Oh, I love that. Have that you tried so uh, Tatanka? Have you tried mm-hmm. buffalo? No, I. Oh, wait. You can make wait. buffalo burgers, bison yeah, burgers. I know I've had elk before. Um, okay. And I'd really like to try um, a snake. Elk, venison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's around here? I'd like to try crocodile too, or alligator, whichever one people eat. Yeah. You know? Whichever one's not terribly <laughs> endangered. Yeah, right, right, basically. It's funny to me that you can eat tuna by the pound, uh-huh. but if there's a little bit of dolphin in it, you're a terrible person. Well, that's because dolphins are too smart. They're cute, I they, know. I know, they are cute, but, although they are terrorists. But I dolphins mean, are assholes. <laughs> Octopi uh-huh. are, um, I don't know, possibly life from another planet. I mean, they are ridiculously smart. Highly intelligent. Smart. Yeah. But we still eat that. We do we totally only eat do. the dumb ones? Yeah. Man, that reminds me of that scene from The Boys, the part where the Aquaman guy eats the octopus, and the whole time the octopus is like, no, don't eat me. Oh, yeah, because yeah. they make him. Uh-huh. Because it's a terrible show. Yeah, because Homelander's a freak. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Deep, that's his name. The that's Deep. right. Yeah. yeah, which is a way cooler name than Aquaman, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they both suck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me that was the first wild turn of the episode. We've oh, already no. had one, right? At least. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. All right. Um, Jason Momoa Aquaman doesn't suck. No, he doesn't. But all the others do. Yeah. <laughs> Justice League Aquaman. <laughs> Family Guy's got a great bit on that, like. <laughs> there's a woman on the beach uh-huh. who needs help and he's like oh man it's too bad you're over there if you could just come six feet this way i could help you out <laughs> <laughs> which is so not true by the way like aquaman really does have some cool moments in the comic books it's just no one cares because <laughs> if for some reason aquaman got shafted and it sucks because I let's really see like superman batman the flash wonder woman I green mean, lantern are so much cooler could that yeah, possibly be I a reason? It, but also, the ocean is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss any lame DC characters? We all know Marvel rules and DC blows. I, you could not be more. They're wrong. trying. No, that's the they thing. They got Batman. No, Marvel has gotten worse lately, though, because yes, everything they, they do is a formula, and it's all so mundane. And you yeah. can already tell what's going to happen. It's just boring, man. The only thing that's coming out of Marvel lately that's worth anything is Deadpool. Oh, yeah. That's it. And that was... All the others, I don't give two shits about. I haven't cared about them since, like, Iron Man 2. But are you so excited for Deadpool 3 when it happens? Yeah, I am. Of course I am. I haven't even watched Dune 2. Mm -hmm. What kind of popcorn bucket is Deadpool 3 going to have? Oh, I've actually seen them already, and they're they're pretty good. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Just mouth open. (laughs) Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But anyway. uh, will we get those at Edwards or will they censor those? I, 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 I think interested. we'll get them. I think it'll be fine. All right. You know what? Yeah. I feel like um, I feel like doing a little show and tell. We've mm-hmm. already done it with our vintage esque yes uh, scenic visit scenic Idaho Falls in the Water Tower shirts. Mm-hmm. What else do we got? Let me just uh, yeah. Okay, this is it. This is it, baby. Love it. Here's one of the things we did. 
I'll do this under the camera Ooh, for good you. Good idea. Mary. Okay, I'll bring it all the way under here. I'll pop it up later. <laughs> <laughs> when we were talking about the Curb Your Enthusiasm Larry David Pants Tent. <laughs> yeah, do you, do you have one going on? No. Um, <laughs> I was, I was but looking, it, it didn't look like it. It. Did, it didn't sound very good if you heard it out of context. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> just, yeah, that's fair. I get that. Do you want to show your good one first or my shitty one first? Uh, we could go at the same time. Okay. Three, two, one. We went to possibly Picasso. <laughs> Which is always so much fun. It is. Yeah. Now, I've been working on a series. You have. But I kind of got shafted this time because the one that I usually do is their little dessert dish, their oh, Sunday yeah. bowl, which is like this, but it's bigger and has a little pedestal and it's wavy on the top, yes. which is very cute. It looks like an old 50s <laughs> diner uh, or maybe even older than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Ice cream, one serve cup. It's just gorgeous. It's very cute. And- they're so handy for snacking. Yes. You know, like, okay. Even when you like, need something bigger than a ramekin, but smaller than a bucket. Right. Smaller, so, smaller than a Deadpool 3 bucket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it helps with portion <laughs> control too. Because yeah. before if I'd get like a bag of chips and I'd put them in a bowl, I'd have like this huge bowl full of chips and it was always too many. And then I'd feel bad at the end. Hold that up but again, this, because that really is yeah. a serving. Yeah. This is perfect. This of is whatever, actually. Of cottage cheese. Well, and the dessert bowls Coke. are slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. So they're even better for that kind of stuff. But yeah, this one I just thought was super duper cute. And I really liked the, like this was as good of an alternative as I could come up with. They called it a sauce bowl, which I think, yeah, it could yeah. work. Uh -huh. Yeah. Anyway, thought it was super cute. It matches my other stuff. Maybe I'll throw a picture of those in at some point. You know, if you can get them all together yeah. so we can show a photo. Well, and the crummy thing too is that one of them, someone put the paint in the wrong hole. So oh, I grabbed yeah. darker color than I meant to. I hate it when that happens. Yeah. So really, I only have two of the series of four that I want to make, but it's fine. You can, we, we'll go back. I'm sure yeah. we will. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, it was fun. We got to catch up with some family. We're going to yeah. mail them theirs. Yes. They obviously couldn't get them there because they were, weren't here for spring break for too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we'll mail them and had some success with that before. It's just a great place to sit and chat. It is. And not concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah. Like at all. <laughs> I think it turned out cute. It's what it is. It's just a tile. I was feeling like I didn't want to be challenged that day mm -hmm. and just have an enjoyable time talking to the family. Yeah. So I can't even show this on camera without saying, I made this. <laughs> and you were going for like kind of a graffiti abstract look, which I think it definitely has. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's nice. We'll, we'll auction this mm -hmm. off for 10 cents. <laughs> the there we go. You know what? First charity function we ever do. I'll tell you what, when we make, when we finally get to the point where we can do an IFAF live, that can be one of our items that we auction off. All right. Yeah, it's it's the IFAF logo on a tile, and it barely uses the right colors and stuff. And it's I'm, pretty close. And I'm stupid. I think it's just the pink that could have been changed, but other than that, it's great. <laughs> you know what? I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I tell you what. I've said I'm stupid and I'm an idiot too much on this show. Yeah. I will work on my negative self-talk, even if I am joking. Okay. <laughs> then, the next thing we did on our summer vacation... And here's the difference between me and Carly. Oh, thank you. We've been talking about these Kinder Happy Hippo biscuits. Would you like to mm -hmm. see them? They're so super cute. Now, I didn't even really like Kinder that much. Mm -hmm. But there's something about these hippos. They have, I don't know if you can tell, they have three bites to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then what's in the middle is, so, and they're crispity, crunchity wafer cookies. They're just such, so light and Waffer thin. Yeah. <laughs> and then they have, I don't know, Nutella and some cream in the middle. Yeah. It's basically like if you took chocolate Nutella and vanilla Nutella, put that in the middle. You know those like um, wafer cookies that like they're, they've got like the waffle pattern on top and there's usually yeah. like four cookies to them. Yeah. It's like that kind of cookie wrapped around this Nutella stuff and they even paint like a little hippo face on it. It's very cute. Matter of fact, should I open one up so that we can see the actual cookie? You wanna, yeah, why don't you open it up? Because we love to try stuff on this show. I can't yeah. even today. Now, you were saying the difference between you and me regarding these is... Is Carly goes... Every, we've been talking about these things for six months. Right. Three? Anyway. A couple. Carly goes everywhere and does everything. So she actually found oh. some... This I think that this one came from your batch because he's kind of messed up. Oh. But you can kind of see he's got like a little little hippo face to him yeah yeah all right and so it's it's the perfect it. bite but it's three perfect bites mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. cool. thank you <laughs> um 
It's so good. So the difference between Carly and I is she got these from some random grocery store. Gas station. Could Gas station. A grocery store. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got mine from Amazon. I was just one day going, this is bullshit, man. <laughs> I want some. Click. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's just, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not proud of it. I'm also not ashamed of it. Okay. I get it. All right. The last thing we did on our spring break and by the way, we don't tell you these to flex. We we tell you this because it might be something you want to do. Well, and also we kept driving by it, and yeah. I've actually I've actually done something similar to this in one of my jobs before because they offered it there, um, and I've kind of been like, you know, what? I want to try that sometime. So I've never had, I don't think, an IV in me for pleasure. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. unless you count giving blood. Yeah, that's what you do. It's you're, a pleasure. You're very good yeah, about that. It's almost time again. Yeah. But anyway, we also went to Prime IV. Yes. Over by Brolum's and Ammon. And look, they give you free socks. Free grippy socks. The free best grippy kind of socks. socks, yes. Yeah, they were very nice. These And these are quality. These look like they could last for mm-hmm. me up to a year. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I so I've actually done IVs before, mostly for hydration and stuff. Okay. But this last- Or vitamins or- Yeah, stuff like that. Why else would somebody do it? Uh, yeah, mostly if you're like needing some hydration or some vitamins, or if you just want like um like a little just bit ran of a energy. Marathon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. it's really oh. good for yeah. Bodybuilders will do it a lot too. I mean, how how is Prime IV different than Liquid IV? Uh, like, <laughs> in terms of the stuff they put in you. Well, for one, it's intravenous. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no. Mainly, it's just that they can uh, get you more direct micro uh, minerals and stuff like that, like. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, I would say so. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm fully convinced, and I wish it could mm-hmm. I part of my daily routine. Right. It's really nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of the, I say one of those IV places, like I've been in one before. I haven't. I've heard of them. Sure. You go in, the room's dimly lit. Mm-hmm. They got those massage chairs, sort of like maybe awesome relaxation hands. Yeah, it's a lot like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only with an IV. But then they've got a registered phlebotomist. Mm-hmm asking you to pick something out on the menu and you don't have to do this, but we did just because it was my first time and I wanted it to be special. Right. <laughs> but um, we got like the baller package. Yeah. Because, and here's the real reason I um, wanted to get the baller packages. It was at the very top and I could tell she wanted to go down the entire list right. and give me the value explanation pre- presentation. And I was just like, yeah, you were so not into it, <laughs> which I get. I do. Well, okay. I'm not into the experience of sitting in a chair for any more than 30 minutes. I know. You're really <laughs> you're really impatient like that. Hairdresser Abby, mm-hmm. she knows that. She knows I will be in her chair less and tip her more the shorter she takes. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I just, so I was kind of like, mm, can we speed this up a little bit? And I, I don't mean to. I hope I don't come across as... Uh, <laughs> asshole because you know I'm trying to work on that. No, I get it. I do. But but here we are talking about it because, you guys, it was an extremely cool experience. Like, yeah. at one point, I was sitting there, and I said to the nurse, and it probably didn't make any sense, but I was like, I can, like, feel my eyeballs. Mm-hmm. Is that, like, do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I can feel my entire tongue. Yes. Yeah. Right? Like you could, you could suddenly feel all of the moisture rush back to parts of your body that had been less moisturized than they should have been for a while. I guess. And I try to drink my water. Yeah. You're usually really good, but you know, it just happens sometimes. Yeah. And just when you I mean, get busy, off you camera, forget. I yeah, have got two waters two here. Two waters. One yeah. that's just clear because it's not annoying on the show. Right. And then one with ice in it. Um, but one of the big reasons that we decided no, no. to go is because I got my first sunburn of the season mm. after being outside mm. for a whole 15 minutes. That's a good reason to go. Well, here's the thing. After that, I felt so dehydrated for days and I couldn't, like, I was pounding water. Couldn't I had at least it. like two big old things of Gatorade a day well, trying when you get to a feel sunburn, hydrated. I imagine your skin gets dry. Yeah. And when your skin feels dry. Yeah, exactly. I don't, you don't feel hydrated. I've never had that bad of an experience because I, shockingly, I get a lot of sunburns. <laughs> and never, <laughs> okay, Ginger. <laughs> and never before have I felt so dehydrated after I got one. But this time around, I felt like that, uh, I felt like that scene where SpongeBob and Patrick are put under a heat lamp so they can dry out. <laughs> and I was just like, water. Is it a post-winter it thing? Is it a post-COVID thing? I don't 
No. Is it a post both thing? You know what? And you can hydrate pretty quickly, can't you? I think. But that if it's... you can't, boom, prime IV. <laughs> prime IV. I think that the biggest reason for it is because I'm constantly like running around and I just keep forgetting to drink water. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm just not a hydrated girly. I need to work on it. It's a problem. Well, two you and know? a half years ago when we met, mm-hmm. almost three now, mm-hmm. um, I know that you were all about the liquid IV. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if we just need to run to Costco and. Sorry, I had to have a hippo. That's your birth <laughs> you, had, you had to have a hippo head. <laughs> I did. Or was that his so tummy? <laughs> no, it was his tummy. Okay. Yeah, or a hippo perfect. butt. <laughs> you know what? I'll just get the I'll get the rest out of the way. That's that's <laughs> why they're so cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can just selectively eat them. Mm-hmm. They're just the perfect little treat. And I never used to understand <clears throat> when my grandma would say I'd be like, hey, you know, she'd we'd go to the store, I'd come out with a Snickers. Mm-hmm. And she was and I'd be like, hey, you want a Snickers? And she'd be like, Oh, just a little bite, just a little mm-hmm. sweet treat. These things, are, if if you're that years old, mm-hmm. yeah, they're perfect. One more time, Especially that's because they're not very big. Kinder Happy Hippos. Okay, mm-hmm. I feel silly um, talking about all that sugar <laughs> when what we're really excited about is Prime IV. And I'm mm-hmm. sure, are there a couple other places in town too? Yeah, there are a few others. You know, a lot of the clinics around here will do that. Okay. The nice thing about them is that they specifically do the IVs, so you don't have to, like, go in and talk to a doctor or anything before that. You don't have to do, like, three pre-appointments before you just go in and get an IV. You can just go in and get one. So they're not, yeah, they're not really giving you medication. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they're they're giving you vitamins, and that's about vitamins, it. Vitamins, saline, yeah. mm-hmm. and, uh, all, yeah. yeah, all the legally allowed by law without a license kind of stuff. Right, Can basically. I say that? <laughs> Yeah. This is turning into yeah. a lousy plug. But like But you did have to fill out like a 20 page form mm-hmm. for the doctor. Yeah. And it was just it really walking out of there, mm-hmm. I felt like I am God's child. <laughs> this is how I was meant to feel forever. Yeah. Well, and they're great for like, you know, athletes, people with hangovers, you know, uh, kind of like Gatorade. You know, if you're drinking yeah. a Gatorade, it's because you've either, <laughs> right, you're you know, either run a athlete. marathon or you're, yeah. a hung, or you're hungover. I, yeah. <laughs> I did see a joke uh, about that once. Somebody was like, I want to see an honest Gatorade commercial where it's just the dude on the side of the bed. He can barely reach for it. He knocks the bottle over. He swears a lot. <laughs> then he calls for his wife to bring him some more. You know? That's funny. Yeah. But anyway. But yeah. You know, really actually. Really cool and a fun brand new experience. Yeah. You know how much I love the brand new experience. Yes. Well, and also, I feel like it kind of proves what a metropolitan area we're becoming. Yeah. That we have an IV bar, you know? You know, they should. Do they have the thing where, because uh, I know oxygen bars were big. Uh-huh. Can you hydrate and suck flavored Ooh. oxygen at the same time? Uh, that's a genius idea. If if they can't, they should, and they probably will. Well, and also because that's a genius idea, <laughs> right? Well, and also you could always just go to Walgreens and get one of those canned airs that you oh, bought the other yeah. day. <laughs> that wasn't the other day. That was like two winters ago, something like that. But yeah, take one of those with you. Mm-hmm. Just suck on that while you do just it. Be like, <sighs> yeah, people are going to think you're insane, but they, it'll be fine. <laughs> if you're wondering what we're talking about, they're called uh, boosts. Yeah, and it's just an it's a aerosol can of oxygen mm-hmm. that I think we sell around here because we're, we live in a mountain state where mm-hmm. lower altitude people come to recreate mm-hmm. and sometimes like, you know, pass out. Yeah. Anyway, Prime IV, that is why you are, hang on, let me get here. <laughs> <laughs> IFAF this week. <laughs> Crisp, Crisp high five. five to you. 20 on finger gun salute. Pew, pew. <laughs> and chef's kiss. To you. <laughs> Ew. Oh, they're gain fresh. No, I washed them just <laughs> okay. like an hour ago. Okay, good. <laughs> well, that was our spring break, and that's our show. It's nice to be back with you. We missed you, too. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It it's a little shorter than usual and not nearly as big of a deep dive, but... Yeah, you know, I'm okay with that. Yeah, we needed to recover from a little bit of burnout. We got we got especially. a spring break <laughs> and um oh yeah, you did have a burnout day. Yeah, I was I was really struggling. I was just tired and I I literally sat in my bed for at least 5 hours watching TikToks and doing nothing else. And that's okay. I felt terrible about myself after, but honestly, it was really refreshing. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I just want you to know that. Thank you. Sometimes yeah. mental health day 
TikTok day. I don't know what they call it. Yeah. Gatorade day. Yeah. You know what? You know, no Gatorade yet, which is a bummer. I should yeah. change that because I'm still feeling I dehydrated. don't feel like, I don't really. Yeah. Because it's been a couple of days since Prime IV. Yeah. I feel like, I, I. yeah, I feel. I mean, that really helped me. My tongue me. is floating in my mouth. Yeah. But even even when we, when we were there, like it really helped me and I definitely felt the boost of hydration, but I was like. Is there any chance you can give me some more saline? And they're like, I'm so sorry. We actually, we're, oh, we're right. almost closed, so we can't do any more. But I was like, okay, I get it. I just, uh, I really need it. I'm just so, de- I was so dehydrated, man. Well, let's go have a do-over. Yeah, let's. It'll be great. You know, I would love a little more. All right. Well, have a great week. And we will see you next week. Probably. Most likely. Most likely.